Hi everybody, we're here to talk about five things to do when caregiving becomes too much. When caregiving becomes that point where you want to just run away and you can't take it anymore. And a cup of coffee anymore doesn't give you the energy that you need to keep going on. How do I know these things? <laughs> I'm Pamela Wilson. I help caregivers and aging adults solve caregiving problems, relieve all of the crazy situations, the stress, the things that you wish weren't happening in caregiving. I've done it for 20 years. I know what happens. I can save you a lot of time, wasted energy, frustration, guilt, all of those feelings. Because caregiving actually can be a very positive thing. So, how do we appreciate being a caregiver for a loved one? How do we appreciate being that aging adult? Some days it feels impossible. The first thing is express appreciation and say thank you. When you wake up in the morning, say thank you God. I woke up today. I'm healthy. As healthy as I can be. I don't have any major issues. Yes, I'm a caregiver. Yes, there's stress, but my life is pretty darn good. Say thank you to your caregiver if you're an aging parent. Appreciate them. Write a thank you note every now and then. How nice would that be? Do you remember when we actually wrote letters? Do you remember actually when like writing was taught in school? They don't even do that anymore. We live off the computer. We live off our little phones off texting. Not that that's not great, but a handwritten note every now and then to say thank you is a nice thing. The cool thing about appreciation is the more appreciative we are of our life, whether it's thank God for this cup of coffee, thank God that my car started today, <laughs> thank God I have a job. The more appreciative we are, the more easily all of the caregiving stress is to manage and the better that we get along with our loved ones. A thank you goes a long way. Number two, this is an important one, especially for women. Stop the self-sacrifice and the martyr syndrome. You don't have to do it all. Say that with me. I don't have to do it all. Women think we have to do it all. And many times we do and we can manage it and it's fine. But there's a point where the caregiving stress gets to be too much, where you can't do it all because the all... The pile keeps getting higher and higher and higher and higher, and soon it's like way too high and you can't do it anymore. That's caregiving. So, stop feeling like, oh, there's no one that can help me. Oh, I can't ask for help. Yes, you can. I know you can. I've helped you actually do it. <laughs> An important thing, though, about martyr syndrome is we all need a backup plan. What's a backup plan? So it's another caregiver, it's someone else that can come in. It may be a backup power of attorney if you have power of attorney. If you don't know what that is, there's information on my website, PamelaDWilson.com. Click on the power of attorney link, visit my power of attorney course. You should have it if you don't. So anyway, a backup caregiver is somebody that can caregive if you can't. So we all think that both of our parents are going to live forever. Doesn't happen. More than likely. One will pass away before the other. My mother passed away before my father. When my mother passed away, who's going to care for my father? It was the remaining children. If you are single, if you have no spouse, if you have no children, you need a serious backup plan about who will care give for you. Okay? Have to put it in place. There's information on my website about it. What you don't want to happen in caregiving is you become so burned out, so tired, so exhausted that you become sick and then you can't care for your spouse or your mom or your dad. And then who is there? There's no one. Don't let that happen. Find help. Get help today. Number three important thing to do when caregiving becomes too much is to schedule time for yourself. I do things like I work out at the gym. I love to read. I love to listen to music. I meditate, I pray, all kinds of things. Those little things are so important to helping on those days when caregiving is way too much, 
you hate caregiving, you don't want to do it anymore, you're done. It happens. That's part of caregiving. <laughs> Number four is to create family activities. And what I mean by that is your aging parent, they may like to see somebody else but you. Can you schedule a movie night where you get movies off the internet, download them, invite family, invite friends, ask them to bring food, almost like having a little movie party at your parents' house. How nice would that be? One, it relieves you from the stress of putting it all together because you ask other people to bring food, to bring snacks, to bring things to drink. All the people that you can't see because you're spending time caregiving, you invite them. What a great idea. You get to see your friends, you get to see your family, you get to see people that you haven't seen in a long time, and your parent gets to see somebody else besides you. What an enjoyable night that might be. Pick one of these habits and start it, okay? To improve caregiving, to improve any kind of situation in life, we have to choose, choose, make a choice, take a step forward, do something, because life doesn't change unless we change it, okay? So take a step forward to get some kind of help, to be thankful every day, to stop being the martyr, to find a backup plan, to schedule time for you, and to create a family activity. Got it? Do it. Take the next step forward. I'm Pamela Wilson. My website is PamelaDWilson.com. There is plenty of helpful information there for you. Free library, courses, newsletter, support group. I'm here to help make caregiving easier and to solve caregiving problems. I will see you in another video. Visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com.